Good morning or good afternoon, uh, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Delphine adeno Usu, the Executive Director of UCAN. The EU Chamber of Commerce in Canada is an, an advocacy body in charge of disseminating uh, CETA information and supports EU-Canada trade relations. We are celebrating, as you can see with the, our logo, UCAN's 25th anniversary. And last month, we also celebrated the third year of CETA implementation. We had a great CETA panel discussion last week, so I invite you to watch um, the video on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. I will drop the link a little bit later in the, in the chat box. So until mid-December, you will get a unique opportunity to discover trade and investment opportunity in each Canadian province every week, uh, every Wednesday, apart from a date in, in November. And I'm glad today to continue our series with Manitoba. Before we get started, I also invite you to use the gallery view so you can see the speakers. And I also invite you to use the chat box and the Q&A session so you can ask all the questions to our speakers of the day. We will have the 15 minute session at the end of the, of the presentation. And now I would like to introduce our two speakers of the day. First, we have Eric Courcel. He's the director of strategy at the World Trade Center, Winnipeg and Alberto Velasco Acosta is the Director of Foreign Direct Investment at Economic Development uh, Winnipeg. So I'll, I'll leave you with our uh, two speakers for around uh, 45 minutes for the presentation and yes, after, afterwards we will have the Q&A session. Eric, over to you and Alberto, you can share the presentation. Thank you, Delphine. And um, I get the presentation up here. Can you see it now? Yes, yes we, we, we can see it. Perfect. Take it away, Eric. Right. Well, thank you very much. And um, it's a pleasure to be here to, uh, this morning or, or this afternoon or night, depending on where you are in the world. Um, so my name is it is Edith Corsell, as, uh, as you know, and I work for the World Trade Center Winnipeg. So I'll just start off with a cool, very quick overview of, of what is the World Trade Center Winnipeg. So we are part of the World Trade Centers Association. Um, there are roughly 310, uh, depending on the year, um, World Trade Centers around the world. Uh, actually, uh, there are many of them in, are, are in Europe, a lot of them in France and Germany. Um, there's some in, in Finland, Denmark, et cetera. So, um, uh, it, it's quite uh, common in Europe. You might have already heard of, of the network. And yes, it is the, the same network as the one in New York City. Uh, so that is actually our, our, um, our international headquarters is the tower in, in New York. So um, uh, kind of work, uh, it's not a franchise, but kind of works in a franchise situation. And what we do is we, we use our centers around the world to uh, open up trade opportunities for our clients uh, locally based here. So um, we are World Trade Center since 2013. So uh, we're a younger one, but um, uh, we are a proud member of, of the network and our president and CEO, Mariette Miller, is actually on um, the, the board of, of directors uh, in New York. Therefore, uh, we are quite plugged into that network. Um, so if you do want to interact with us, with us or um, through the World Trade Center in your city or location, uh, that is definitely one way to reach us. Uh, next slide, please. So, what is Winnipeg? What is Manitoba? So, I I, um, uh, I put it on a map here. Um, so, Winnipeg is at the very center of the country. Uh, there's actually a sign about 20 minutes east of Winnipeg that says this is the geographic center of Canada. <laughs> so, uh, Canada is a very big country. It takes about six and a half days to drive <laughs> from one end to the other and we are right at the exact middle. Um, in terms of World Trade Centers, there are seven of them in Canada, uh, with Winnipeg being obviously the one in the center, and um, uh, I think it's the second newest one, uh, Saskatoon being the, the latest one to be added. So there's Vancouver, Edmonton, Saskatoon, Winnipeg, Toronto, Montreal, and Halifax. And um, we work together uh, on many projects as a Canadian entity, so, um, uh, another way to access not just Winnipeg, but uh, other World Trade Centers in Canada is to approach one of us um, or through the World Trade Center uh, in your location uh, to put us into contact and, and we can work either as a center based locally or as a national network uh, across Canada. Next slide, please. So today's presentation, I'll, I'll start off by speaking more about the province itself and I'll let Alberto speak about the city. 
So um, what we have in terms of natural economic strengths, um, the first one that's the most obvious for anyone who's been here is um, our central location. We are close to um, basically within the day or two's drive or, or uh, uh, train shipment or a few hours flight from basically all the major markets in North America. So being at the center, we are uh, about three hours flight from Vancouver, just as we are about three hours flight from Montreal. Um, and if you go south, it's about three hours to uh, a place like Houston or Dallas, Texas. So um, what we have access to is about uh, uh, three or 400 million people within a, a few hours uh, drive or flight, uh, which is uh, basically a, a very strategic position to be in. Because if you think of it, if you were on the east or west coast, uh, you're basically crossing a continent to reach the other side. So uh, being it right at the center does give us a, a very big advantage. And um, I guess when our city was founded about 150 years ago, uh, it was often called the Little Chicago uh, because Chicago plays that role in the United States um, as being a central hub. So Winnipeg was founded on the same principle, which was very much based on transportation and its central position. Next slide. So what we produce here, actually, if you want to go back, I forgot to mention one thing, uh, just to give people a sense of scale, uh, especially those who haven't been to Canada or, or North America. So if, if you see the shaded area on the map, that is the, the, our home province of Manitoba. So the, the province of Manitoba has the same, or actually is actually bigger th than France. So in, in terms of um, surface area, uh, it's about uh, um, 10 or 15% larger than uh, metropolitan France, which is uh, France without its overseas possessions. And it's even the same size as France with its overseas possessions put together. Um, or to give you another sense of how big it is, uh, Northern Manitoba on its own is the size of Germany. So just the north of our province is the size of Germany and we have one and a half million people living in it. So um, what it kind of represents is we have not very many people, but um, a lot of resources, right? Um, we have the same resources as, uh, as some major European countries and uh, in terms of, of uh, resources per capita, it's very low, so, uh, or if it's already very high. So therefore there's a lot of opportunity here um, and everything's done on a grand scale, especially agriculture. And uh, for if anyone's in the U.S., um, Manitoba is roughly the size of Texas. So the Americans love to say how big Texas is. Manitoba was the same size. <laughs> Next slide, please. So um, given that we have a lot of natural resources and, and open space, um, hydroelectricity is something that, that we have quite a, quite a lot of. Um, Manitoba actually rests on um, a ice age um, gla glacier field essentially. So when, when the ice melted and, and retreated northward, it left about 100,000 lakes and rivers in Manitoba. So if you're doing the math, that's about one lake or river per 14 people, <laughs> uh, roughly. So um, we, with those massive rivers, uh, we, we set up hydroelectric dams. So about 98% of our electricity is, is um, generated from those hydroelectric dams. So we are very green in terms of uh, electricity production. And we export a lot of it uh, to the United States through Minneapolis, or Minnesota and Minneapolis, and then all the way down to California even. So um, we are not just a, a producer, but also an exporter. And we do also have a, an entity called Manitoba Hydro International. Uh, and they go into less developed countries and help them um, with their electricity distribution systems. So we have not just the generation side, but also the, the, um, the distribution consulting side. We are uh, amongst the best in the world at, at doing that. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so if you've Googled Winnipeg or Manitoba before uh, the presentation, you might've noticed that it gets cold in the winter. Um, instead of seeing that as a disadvantage, uh, we're trying to turn that into an, an advantage. So I know that, that something similar is being or has been done in, in a place like uh, Sweden and possibly Finland, where they have cold weather testing facilities. Uh, the one that we, we have two facilities here in Winnipeg or in Manitoba. The first is in Winnipeg. It's at the airport. And um, they basically test um, uh, engines, aircraft engine turbines. Uh, for cold weather conditions. So about 80% of all um, uh, 
plane turb turbines essentially are being tested there. So you're thinking uh, companies like General Electric, Rolls Royce, Pratt and Whitney. Um, they are the ones testing their engines in Winnipeg for their global distribution. So it's not just a you know the local North American market; it's a, a global market being tested here in Winnipeg. And the second one we have is in Thompson, Manitoba, which is uh, about 800 kilometers north of Winnipeg. So right about midway up uh, the Manitoba, and um, they have a partnership with uh, Rolls Royce and Pratt Whitney. And I believe Ford Motor uh, Ford Car Company uh, to, to test car engines and and, and uh, plane parts uh, in cold weather as well. And when we say cold weather uh, in the winter time here, about you can expect about two or three weeks a year, it gets down to a minus forty degrees Celsius. So sometimes <clears throat> it, it's just easier to open the door than to to test it in the climate control because there's no need to, <laughs> to climate control when it's already forty below zero. But uh, the, the, the summer times are nice, so so it's not always that bad. Next slide, please. So again, uh, what we offer here in terms of, of uh, uh, lifestyle here in Manitoba is, is quite a bit different than you would expect, uh, even uh, in places like uh, Quebec or uh, Ontario or BC. Uh, because Canada is a continent more than a country, uh, we have all types of ecosystems. So here in Manitoba, um, in the southern Part of Manitoba, it's very flat. It's the Great uh, North American Plains. Um, so you're th if you're thinking bisons and and buffalo, um, that's basically what it was <laughs> once upon a time. Uh, very flat. And then as you move up north, uh, it starts to look a lot more like uh, parts of Ontario and Quebec, which is called the Canadian Shield, which is very much um, based on mining. And then as you go, go all the way up north, uh, when you're hitting um, the the border with Nunavut, it starts to, to turn into tundra, which is uh, the Arctic um, uh, ice fields or Arctic uh, ecosystem. So in terms of tourism, what we have, what you see on the screen here, first of all, is about midway up uh, Manitoba, we have uh, two uh, pretty big lakes, Lake Manitoba and Lake Winnipeg. And uh, there's ice fishing there year long, uh, or not year long, there's ice fishing in the winter time and fishing in the summertime. But uh, ice fishing is uh, a very popular for uh, tourists as well, not just for the locals. And uh, we, because we have thousands of lakes um, and all of them are uh, freshwater lakes, they're not saltwater, uh, we do have a pretty big and um, world-class fishing industry. So uh, a lot of, especially uh, Americans come down, uh, they take a small plane, they fly into a, a, a lake that it doesn't have a road to it essentially, and they go they go spend uh, a week um, uh, fishing, and they get these massive fish that have um, basically no predators in 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 the natural world, so they they get to a pretty big size. So it is world class fishing if you're into that. Um, on the bottom left here, we have um, a spa, so that's a Nordic spa here in Winnipeg. Uh, that that was um, an investment we took in from Quebec a few years ago, but um, uh, we have lots of uh, kind of modern and nice tourism facilities as well here in Winnipeg. And of course, at the top left here, we have the polar bears, which are in a place called Churchill, Manitoba. So that's at the very north of the province. And that is uh, basically considered one of the world's best spots to uh, see polar bears in their natural habitat. Uh, in terms of research, uh, like I said, I, I didn't mention the the cold weather testing, but something else that that uh, people don't really realize is that we have a level four bio bio um, biology lab. I'll just name it that microbiology lab um, here in Winnipeg. So level four essentially means that there's about ten or twelve in the world that exist. So it's it's fairly rare to have it at that level. The there are only one or two level five. So if you th if you think of uh, the American um, Center for Disease Control in in Atlanta. That's a level five facility. Level four is uh, the one uh, right up against that. And um, there's only about 10 or 12 in the world. And what we discovered here as our claim to fame was the uh, the vaccine to Ebola a few years ago. So those were uh, one of peg based scientists that discovered that. And they were, they were local heroes uh, uh, and kind of paraded around uh, our, our various events here for, for a while um, for, for having discovered that. And uh, with nowadays, with the virus, uh, with the coronavirus, um, they certainly are pushing for that vaccine as well, or um, there's definitely plugged into uh, what's going on um, in terms of research in that. So we do have uh, quite an extensive 
uh, network and uh, foundation for microbiology uh, here in Winnipeg, or especially Winnipeg. And uh, at the bottom there um, is uh, our Arctic research is, al is also quite a, uh, fairly advanced. So we have a world-renowned scientist called uh, Michael Barber, or David Barber, I believe. And he um, essentially opened a uh, marine Arctic uh, research facility up in Churchill. And they really conduct research on things like oil spills in Arctic waters. Uh, what are the effects? So how does that affect the marine life? So uh, anything that has to do with cold weather and uh, testing and um, it does machinery, machinery work in 40 below, uh, that kind of stuff does get tested in, in, in Manitoba. If you're, if you're doing it anywhere in North America, uh, Manitoba is amongst the best places uh, because of our, of our climate, but also our institutional um, uh, framework, which has existed here for quite a while. And uh, if you're thinking about free trade, uh, we are quite a bit, um, you know, we're quite active in that field as a country. So, of course, we have NAFTA, which is now called the USMCA, but it's essentially the same agreement. Uh, so that, that is with the United States and Mexico. We have CETA, which, of course, is signed with the European Union. Um, there is the Korean Free Trade Agreement that was signed uh, maybe four or five years ago with, uh, with South Korea and also the CPTPP, which uh, the Americans pulled out of, which means that uh, Canada is, is even better positioned to take advantage of um, the, the Pacific Rim markets. So essentially what it means is that if you're coming in from elsewhere in the world and trying to enter either North America or go through North America to reach somewhere else, uh, Canada makes a lot of sense because we, we do have um, free trade agreements with most of the world's largest and most um, developed economies. Uh, and we see a lot of that companies setting up in, um, in Southern Manitoba, for example. And there was an example uh, later on in this presentation of a European company setting up right at the border on the Manitoba side to uh, mostly export to the United States um, to take advantage of our, of our weaker dollar um, and our, our um, expertise in agriculture, for example. And I'll, I'll, at this point, I'll leave it up to Alberto and take it from there. Yeah, and um, as, as Eric is mentioning, we, as a country and as a province, we got this access to um, global markets, and that puts Canada in a very favorable position for businesses that need to work in uh, global markets and operate with uh, global supply chains. If you, bring, you need to bring in parts and products from other countries, process them in one central location, and then dispatch those to global markets, Manitoba is a good place to do that. And um, one other reason why we stand out as a province is because by being in the middle, we have access to key trade corridors because by being in the middle doesn't mean much if we're not well connected. Um, and we are well connected. Uh, by going south, we got access to the mid-continent corridor that goes all the way down to Mexico. Going west, we got access through the port of Vancouver to uh, the Asian market. Uh, going north, we got access to all the natural, natural resources that Canada has um, in that part of the country. And going east, we got the Port of Montreal and uh, the Great Lakes, uh, St. Lawrence Gateway into the European market in South America. So we got that access. Uh, but the, looking a little bit um, more specifically on the city of Winnipeg, uh, which is my role, it's, uh, it's very interesting that um, I can share with you that another advantage that we add as a city is that we are located one hour away from the Canada-US border. And again, um, that location may not be significant if it wouldn't be by the connectivity that we have to the U.S. market and the logistics that allows our products to move down to the U.S. and products from the U.S. to come up to Canada via Winnipeg. We got that one hour drive, but the border crossing is not just a border for people to cross. It's a trade corridor. Uh, it's a very efficient trade corridor where the standard um, wait time is 10 minutes or less for cargo uh, move it on truck or rail to go through that border fairly quickly. We got uh, the different inspection points that are required on both the Canadian side and the U.S. side, so trade can cannot be disrupted. Um, and we're very efficient in that in that matter. Um, we're a critical transportation center between Toronto and Vancouver, and that is significant. Um, Eric was explaining explaining um, or giving you a better context on the size of Manitoba in Canada. 
But I'll, I'll, I'll add another layer by giving you just um, another contextual comparison that the distance between Toronto and Vancouver is almost the same as the distance between Moscow and Lisbon. So if you can imagine that distance between Moscow and Lisbon, you can gauge a better um, uh, uh, idea of how big Canada is and what the distance between Toronto and Vancouver is. So by Winnipeg being placed in the middle, it, it gives us that competitive advantage of being able to connect east, west, and south, right? So you got that trifecta working for us. And the ability of having that central time zone that you can work with any team, any office, any operation within North America within one day operating day in, in Winnipeg because we're, we're very well connected to function in Atlantic time, in Central, in Eastern time, in Mountain time, and Pacific time, which are the different time zones that we got in Canada that as Eric explained, Canada is more like a continent, so it makes sense that we got so many time zones. But Winnipeg, we're able to pick up the phone and speak to someone in Vancouver, in British Columbia on the Pacific coast, uh, or later in the day, pick up the phone and speak to someone in uh, Halifax, in Nova Scotia, which, has, which is on the, on the Atlantic coast. Who we are, um, Eric explained to you who they are as the World Trade Center Winnipeg, who we are as Yes Winnipeg and Economic Development Winnipeg. Yes Winnipeg, we are the uh, sales team for Winnipeg. That's a quick way of uh, explaining it. And Yes Winnipeg, we're part of Economic Development Winnipeg. Our job as uh, EDW is to be the, uh, the main force in Winnipeg to help businesses to grow and to bring companies to help companies to land as as softly and as uh, friendly as, as they can in in Winnipeg uh, and we work very closely with key partners like the city of Winnipeg and the province of Manitoba we're not a government entity we're an arm's length agency uh, from the city of Winnipeg uh, but we are structured as a private sector entity that gives us the flexibility to move at the speed of uh, business uh, but we do receive funding from the uh, different levels of government that makes our services be free of charge uh, because our only focus is to help businesses in your case companies from Europe to land in Winnipeg and be able to, to take advantage of uh, our city as a platform for growth and when I say platform for, for, for growth and about the central location some of the, the tools or the uh, assets that companies here have access is the trimodal uh, mode of transportation uh, connectivity that we have here in, in the city. Our airport is uh, one of the most reliable in, in, in the world and Eric spoke about how cold it gets sometimes here in the winter and we, we do get a lot of snow like most of Canada and northern United States. But one thing that is very unique about Winnipeg is that our airport rarely closes and rarely delays planes. And um, I like my American friends, but um, I've been trapped in several US airports when there's a big snowstorm and then all the flights get canceled or get delayed and then mayhem breaks. Uh, and, and that's an unusual for, for uh, people from Winnipeg to see because our, our, our airport remains operational despite uh, the snow, despite the weather. So it's very reliable and people can plan uh, effectively uh, for both for passenger and for cargo moves. Actually for cargo, Winnipeg is number three in Canada for cargo operations. We may not be the biggest in terms of passenger moves because other cities like uh, Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver have bigger populations. But when it comes to cargo, Canada, uh, Winnipeg is number three. And our, our central location has to do a lot with that ability to move cargo uh, all across uh, North America and in the world, actually. We, we got big Antonovs coming from uh, uh, Russia, Central Asia, coming in and shipping taking some of the combines and tractors that are manufactured here in Winnipeg back to their home countries. And we get planes flying, uh, flying pigs actually. So that, that say when pigs fly, they, they actually fly and they fly out of Winnipeg to South Korea and China. And um, just to give you an idea of how big cargo is. Also rail, rail is important. 
Winnipeg is the only city between Toronto and Vancouver that has three class one railways coming to our city. And that is important because having access to a class one railway gives you access to uh, single line fees, which means that with one lane, you can connect to uh, the major seaports and urban centers in North America. You, we got two Canadian railways, the Canadian National and Canadian Pacific, and also the American <clears throat> Berlin, Burlington North and Santa Fe. Um, sorry. <clears throat> Um, and building upon these big assets, we have um, Centerport Canada is uh, the biggest inland port in, in North America with 20,000 acres of land to be developed. That's about 8,000 hectares. Uh, it is uh, built around the, or um, anchored by the, the, the Winnipeg Airport, and it's building more and more infrastructure to allow transportation, manufacturing, and distribution companies to set up shop and function effectively. Also, trucking is another key asset of ours. Uh, we got over 400 trucking companies operating in Manitoba. And they, there's a reason for that. Um, as, as Canada, um, over 70% of our trade is conducted with the U.S. Um, as a province, Manitoba is very similar, the figure. Over 70% of our trade is with the U.S. So as you can imagine, a lot of that is moved by land, either by rail or by truck. But even within the, the trade that we got with the U.S., you're going to laugh, but about 70 to 80 percent of it moves by truck. So truck is a big component of our cross-border trade. And that's why we got so many options for companies to move cargo back and forth between Canada and the U.S. from Manitoba. And the, the big advantage of that is that our trucking companies are very familiar to the cross-border processes that need to take place for cargo to move safely north and, north and south, and even down to Mexico, because we got quite a bit of uh, trucking shipments going between Canada and, and Mexico. Another big advantage of Winnipeg is that we're affordable. Um, so for companies that are looking to set up shop in North America, and you want to stretch the, uh, the euro, you want to stretch the dollar, you want to you want to make uh, uh, you want to uh, find a place that can help you uh, make the most of the economy, make the most out of the costs of a certain shop at a new location, and in a way find a place where the tuition fee of the learning experience of how to do business in North America is manageable. And Winnipeg is one of those cities that gives you that affordability of how to do business in North America. One quick example is the hydro cost, the electricity cost. Winnipeg, we have in Manitoba, we have the lowest electricity, industrial electricity rate in, in North America, as you can see in this chart. Uh, if we didn't build this chart, because if it would have been us making this chart, obviously you will say, well, you're biased. Of course, you're going to be the lowest in the chart you made. But um, actually, this is a chart from um, uh, Hydro-Quebec. Uh, they, they do uh, regular comparisons of costs across uh, North America. And um, Quebec is the second cheapest, but Winnipeg, Manitoba, were the cheapest in, in North America. And what this is, is it's important for companies that use a lot of electricity as, as part of their processing operations. Because if, if electricity is one big part of your recurrent expenses, you may want to consider being in a place where the cost is very low from the onset. And not just that, uh, for companies that have a strong environmental component, if they got a strong and aggressive goal of becoming uh, environmentally friendly and manage better their emissions, um, operating in Manitoba is going to give them that green um, credit in, in a very short time period. Because as Eric mentioned, 98% of our electricity comes from renewable sources. And it come, when it comes to space, we're, we're also affordable. In the industrial space to rent in, in, in Winnipeg is one of the lowest in, in Canada. And obviously that gives you access to um, the space that you need to start your operation in, in, in Canada. And this supply keeps growing. As I mentioned, we got places like the Inland Port, uh, Center Port Canada, and projects like that um, uh, ensure that the, uh, the supply of more industrial pace in the years to come is somewhat secured. But and affordability goes beyond doing business. It's also about living in Winnipeg. 
And one key indicator of that is uh, the cost of a house, right? Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal the words of um, the, the uh, lead person for Ubisoft here in Winnipeg when uh, he said that one of the advantages that he found in Winnipeg is that the, uh, the American dream is still possible in Winnipeg. The American dream may not be possible in the U.S. because it's so unaffordable to live that people end up living in, in small apartments and they un, end up living to work and there's little quality of life. But in places like Winnipeg, the cost of living is, is so manageable that it gives you the ability to own a house with a front yard, with a backyard, and the ability to get out of work and have a high quality of life with your family. So um, the lead of Ubisoft coined that, that, that phrase that, that I use often, that the American dream is still possible in Winnipeg. The cost of a house in, in, in our city is one of the lowest in, in Canada of uh, just over 300,000 Canadian dollars. So all of the figures are in Canadian dollars, just to give you a sense. Uh, so don't think US dollars. Our Canadian dollar is uh, more manageable, especially in comparison to the, to the Euro. Uh, but if you want to rent, even the rents in Winnipeg are uh, among the lowest in, in Canada. And for those that got families, it's very important to find daycare, obviously. And uh, Winnipeg in Manitoba, we got the second lowest in in Canada, right after Quebec. So as you can see, you can stretch your dollar as a family, as an individual wanting to live in, 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 in Winnipeg. And for you that may want to hire people in, in your new operation in Canada, the minimum wage in, in Manitoba is one of the lowest in Canada, as you can see in, in, in this chart. And um, the ability of not just hiring the people that we got available, but the ability to bring in the people that that you need. Um, one of the big advantages that we have in Canada, not just in Manitoba and in Winnipeg, is that we, we are a very diverse, diverse um, country. Um, we, Manitoba, we have uh, what is being called the gold, gold standard for immigration programs. Our provincial nominee program is, it's been one of the best in, in the country. We got other provinces looking at the program here in Manitoba and uh, taking elements that have worked really well. And um, one of the reasons why it has worked really well is because we brought over 224,000 new immigrants to the province since the inception of the program. And these are qualified immigrants and uh, there's, uh, there's a checklist of uh, qualifications and requirements that the province needs to keep the economy growing. And the program has been successful in linking up those needs with the right talent from around the world. Um, and th obviously that diversity is also reflected in the languages that are spoken here in Manitoba. Uh, as you can see in, in, in the uh, graphic on the screen, uh, Tagalog, uh, the, the Filipino community here is rather large. Um, but uh, uh, following that, we got historically French being one of the main languages in, in Canada and Manitoba uh, and um, other uh, European and, and Asian um, uh, languages. So, but it, it, we know that we understand that bringing more talent is key and one of the programs that we're um, continuously promoting here in, in economic development in Winnipeg is the Talent Hub which is a new program that we launched last year to connect companies to the right talent. And some of that talent may be in Winnipeg, some of that talent may be in Canada, we may need to attract them to Winnipeg, or it may be international. So we got a team dedicated to helping companies um, attract those, those talent. Now, when it comes to economic uh, sector focus, where do we shine in Manitoba? Where do we shine in, in Winnipeg? Those are the, uh, the six economic sectors where we shine as a province, where we shine as a city. Um, just to give you an idea, about 80% of the economy in Manitoba is concentrated in the Winnipeg region. So it's, uh, it's fair to say that what's strong in Winnipeg is strong in, in, in Manitoba, with the exception of agribusiness, that is, it goes beyond Winnipeg all across the, the province. Um, and Eric and I will be going back and forth just to give you a little bit more context on some of the companies that you'll be seeing on the screen. Um, but we wanted to give you a little bit more uh, details on what's going on in, in some of our key sectors like advanced manufacturing. 
you see on the picture um, a transit bus, a uh, new flyer. And the reason why it's there is because New Flyer is now part of what we call NFI Group, which is the largest um, uh, bus transit or he heavy large vehicle manufacturer in North America and is based out of Winnipeg. They, they own within the group New Flyer that manufactures some of those heavy duty transit buses that you saw in the previous picture. They successfully, they've developed a new electric bus that, um, and now a hybrid bus that uses hydrogen and, and electricity as fuel. And they tested uh, the new technology in Manhattan and in New, in new York uh, last year. They had nine units operating uh, all, all across Manhattan. And that was such a successful pilot that now um, Manhattan, the city of New York, placed an order of uh, a, num a higher number of buses for new flyer to manufacture so they can continue using that technology in Manhattan. Obviously, as you can appreciate by new flyer implementing that pilot and now manufacturing the, 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 the product for Manhattan has built up that knowledge of what to do, how to use the, for, um, to, the, to that design and manufacture electric and hybrid buses, but also the infrastructure required in a city to operate such type of uh, technology. And you, Eric, you, you also had um, a mention of uh, the presence in Europe. Yes, so New, New Flyer, I think it was earlier this year or last year, they bought into, or they, they purchased a company called Alexander Dennis from um, uh, Scotland. I think officially it's in uh, Scotland, but it's right at the English border. So uh, despite all the, the turmoil with Brexit, it should, I'm pretty sure will remain in, in the, the EU, uh, being on the Scottish side. But um, it is one of the biggest bus manufacturers in Europe. And uh, so New Flyer is now considered a global company, not just a North American uh, player. But if you come to North America, you, and on any major city bus, you'll, you'll often notice that it's a New Flyer build. So in Los Angeles, Chicago, uh, New York, Toronto, Montreal. So it's a, it's a fairly big company with a big part of the market share. And the, some of the names that you see on the screen, they may not be telling you much because you're not from this part of the world, but they're big names in their industries here in, in North America. Magdon, they manufacture um, agricultural uh, vehicles and machinery that you can find in many fields, not just in North America, but in places like Kazakhstan, Argentina, Brazil. Um, we talked about your flyer kitchen craft. They, um, manufacture cabinetry that is used all across North America. Price Industries, uh, just to give you an idea, they are Apple's HVAC distributor of choice. Um, they uh, took care of all the HVAC systems in uh, Apple's Cupertino headquarters, and now they're the exclusive HVAC provider for all the Apple stores in the, in the network. And they keep doing that type of uh, R&D work here in Manitoba in conjunction with a plant they got in Atlanta. Windpack, uh, Eric will give you give us a little bit more detail, but they got a big plant here that uh, uh, manufactures uh, food packaging that has been exported to um, different parts of Canada, the U.S. and Mexico from here. And Palliser, they got uh, they manufacture high quality furniture, and they got a uh, an interesting uh, strategy where they got manufacturing facilities here in Winnipeg. Uh, twinned with manufacturing facilities in Mexico, and they, they got the two facilities alternating between high engineering and low cost uh, parts to make the numbers meet and, and be able to be competitive. Um, but you, you had, you wanted to share something about Winpack, uh, Eric? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, Winpack is actually a Finnish company, so it is a European company um, um, uh, from the outset. And Price uh, is in Germany. Uh, I believe they, they, they started exporting there fairly recently. So, um, and there's also uh, Palliser Furniture. So, so for Palliser Furniture, if you've gone to a theater in France especially, but also Italy, you might have noticed that um, some of the seating has changed. So instead of having the, those narrow theater seats, um, you have these uh, very wide reclining seats in the theaters now. Um, they are one of the world leaders in, in producing those and they are uh, the exclusive uh, uh, supplier to one of the biggest chains in Europe for um, in, in theater uh, management. So th those seats might have been made by um, uh, Palliser Furniture. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. The brand is Encore, Encore by Palliser. So next time you go to the movies, take a look at the, uh, at the brand. If it's Encore, then it's Manitoba made. Uh, but also we got some of the recent investments in Canada. Goose is possibly a, a brand that you may know, um, world-known brand. And uh, it's, uh, it's a product that it's been built with a made in Canada um, uh, side of it. I mean, that's part of the strength of the company of the, and the brand. And when we say it's made in Canada, it's, it's actually been made in three cities. It's been made in Toronto, Montreal, and Winnipeg. Winnipeg is where we got the largest uh, manufacturing presence. We got three plants here in Winnipeg where they manufacture all the high quality uh, coats and jackets that some of you may know. But aerospace is also important here in the province. One thing that a lot of people may not know is that with Winnipeg, we have the third largest uh, aerospace cluster in Canada. Yep, a lot of people know of Montreal with all the activity going in, in Montreal. Uh, that people may know of Toronto, uh, but Winnipeg with the third largest and the largest in Western, Western Canada. Um, as uh, uh, Asetic was mentioning, we got the cold testing facilities that give us uh, uh, an important visibility in the world stage. But we also got other leaders like Boeing. Boeing, they got their largest uh, composite manufacturing facility in North America here in Winnipeg. Uh, they got a big facility of uh, just over 800,000 uh, square feet and um, a few, quite a few people work in there. Yes, as you can imagine, uh, um, the pandemic was not uh, generous to, to the industry. And they've been working hard with not just uh, the local cluster managers, but with uh, national organizations to see what can be done as, uh, as a national uh, aerospace sector to uh, pivot where we need to pivot and to innovate where we need need to innovate so right now it's too early to, to tell what's going to happen uh, but what it's uh, advantageous for manitoba is that we're we are very well diversified that can help uh, can give companies in this sector uh, a broader number of options for them to start looking at if they want to pivot standard aero is uh, one of the leaders in in mro maintenance repair and overhaul and Winnipeg central location has been key to their success and we got other names like magellan they they are very well ingrained in some of the satellite defense projects uh, um, uh, with the us and, and in canada um, and other leaders in in the space agribusiness this is where this is one of the sectors that uh, are strong not just in winnipeg but all across uh, in manitoba it's the, the traditionally has been one of the most important sectors in, in our province, in our city. We export a lot of the agricultural out, output. Um, as you can appreciate, as Eric mentioned, we are roughly 1.5 uh, million people living in the province where we produce a lot more food, uh, high quality food. So what we do is we share the love with many other markets. And um, that has, it's been a, a very important agribusiness uh, base here in, in Winnipeg. We got 16 grain companies based out of Winnipeg, and I'll mention uh, who they are. But before, I wanted to give you a look at what are those crops, that uh, agricultural outputs that we are strong in. So um, if we were to look at Manitoba's exports to Europe, to the European Union, the products that you see on the screen would be there um, on, on the top. 10 uh, products that we sent over to you guys. Uh, we got wheat, canola, potatoes, oats, um, so all of uh, those products. I mentioned that we got 16 uh, agricultural companies headquartered in, in Winnipeg, but they're not just any companies. They're one of the largest in the world. We've got companies like Richardson International, where they've been born and raised, and they, they are global leaders in uh, agriculture food processing. Actually, our office, the CDW, we're located in the Richardson building in downtown um, Winnipeg, but we're also uh, the headquarters of Cargill uh, Canada. As you know, the global headquarters is in Minneapolis, which is the nearest uh, U.S. city here in, to, to Winnipeg. Uh, and Cargill, uh, their Canadian headquarters is, is, are based out of uh, Winnipeg. 
But we got a lot of innovation happening in this space. We got companies like Manitoba Harvest that is now one, the world largest hemp producer. It's another alternative protein source. We got companies like the Winning Combination that is one of the leading companies in Canada that manufactures uh, food supplements and um, alternative, alternative proteins. And Farmers Edge that they are uh, one of the leading companies in Canada, in North America, in fact, in uh, bringing uh, digital agriculture to the uh, forefront, leveraging some of the expertise that we got in Winnipeg in terms of telecoms, satellite, uh, uh, precision agriculture, and connecting to farmers on site. Some of the recent investments in this space is um, the Patterson Global Foods that they're uh, building a big oat processing plant. Uh, the, the idea is to manufacture oat milk. Married, married Functional Foods, they, uh, they're the first in the world that they're doing a large scale food grade canola protein pro production facility. So they innovated in extracting protein out of canola, which by the way, canola was invented here in Manitoba at the University of Manitoba. We got Roquette and Simplot. I'll let uh, Eric give a little bit more context on Roquette, but uh, Simplot, a uh, US firm, is expanding their potato processing plant. So if you were to be in North America and you buy McCain, I'm sorry, uh, Simplot's, well, actually McCain's too, the two of them, uh, frozen uh, potato fries, very likely they'll come from Manitoba. Eric on Roquette. Yeah, so so uh, Raquette is a fairly recent investment. So uh, Raquette is a, is a French company based in, in Lille, um, and they have uh, processing plants uh, across Europe. And uh, the ones in Europe are, were some of the biggest in the world. Um, but their recent investment here in, um, in a town ca called Portage la Prairie, which is an hour uh, uh, west of Winnipeg, um, will outproduce uh, the ones that already exist. So it will become the world's largest. And uh, that, that's the company I was mentioning that, that came over, over from Europe. Um, they want to be close to where uh, the raw material was, right? Um, it, it's, it makes more sense to process the peas uh, where the peas are, are grown and ship it uh, to the consuming markets rather than doing the inverse. So um, they, they purposely uh, came to Manitoba um, after uh, several years, I would say, of, of um, you know, calculating what would be the optimal place. And um, they set themselves up uh, in Portage, which, which has a rail line going east-west, but also north-south. So they can essentially uh, send their pea protein powder uh, south into the United States um, fairly quickly and directly into the heart of um, the American ag or agriculture um, markets, which is the, the Midwest and in the U.S., so uh, it's fairly significant for a town of 10,000 people to get uh, several hundred jobs in that, in, in that industry is, is fairly significant. And uh, we were more than happy to, to, um, to bring in uh, a multinational from Europe uh, to, to have a large investment in, in Manitoba. Yeah, and if you were to, if you're curious to learn about that investment, if you, if you were to Google it, you'll find that the initial announcement talks about an investment of 400 million. But now it's 600 million because Rocket is realizing the importance of what they can build out of Manitoba. So they're investing uh, a lot more. So moving quickly, because I know that uh, time is pressing and we want to hear from you if you have any questions. Another industry that is growing significantly here in Manitoba is creative. And um, one of the the strengths that we got is the uh, cultural diverse that we got here in Manitoba. So if people were to, um, people are actually come into Winnipeg and, and make their movies and, and documentaries. And so they come and find any um, profile that they need for, for the project here in Winnipeg, any language, any eth ethnic background, whatever they need, it can be found here. Winnipeg has been um, doubled, which means, uh, films portraying, trying to portray New York, Connecticut, Chicago, or Boston in their movies, they actually come to Winnipeg to film and use our architecture, which is very similar to those cities in the US. Uh, and they do it because it's a lot cheaper to do it in, in Winnipeg and in Canada than doing that in the US. Uh, what some of the most renowned uh, 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 studios that are coming to Winnipeg are the ones that you see on the screen, Paramount, Fox, Warner Brothers, and so on. 
But a big reason that why they come here also is because Manitoba has uh, the most attractive competitive film and video tax credit in, in Canada. So it allows companies to um, recuperate some of the uh, uh, expenses made in Manitoba, and that obviously helps with their costs. Uh, in the, on the screen, you see some of the companies, leading companies in, in this space. Uh, you can see Ubisoft is a French company with a big presence in Quebec, and actually the studio here in Winnipeg is the first presence they got in Western Canada, so we're very excited to see them grow. They're um, 100 people operation, that's what they're building up to, and it seems like uh, they'll be growing more beyond that. ICT, very quickly, um, Winnipeg is the most competitive city where to operate a tech uh, firm in, in, in Canada, as you can see uh, on the screen. We did not make that figure up. It's uh, numbers that we, um, we pulled out of a CBRE research paper. And some of the companies that we uh, we have growing in the city are uh, Skip the Dishes, Amazon Web Services, and Pharmacy. I spoke about the latter one, but Skip the Dishes is a company that was acquired initially by uh, Just Eat out of the UK, but more recently was acquired by Takeaway from uh, the Netherlands. So now this is uh, another European footprint that we got in in Winnipeg. It was. Um, a company that was born in Winnipeg, but were later acquired by this European company, as I mentioned. Uh, but they had the decision to make if they wanted to wrap up operations and move, centralize everything in Europe, or to grow their Canadian presence um, uh, from Winnipeg. And we worked with them really closely to prove that they could scale their operations. And now they're up to 2,000 people here in Winnipeg. And last year they announced the building of their uh, headquarters, Canadian headquarters here in downtown Winnipeg. So very happy to have them here. And um, Amazon Web Services, they purchased a company called the Thinkbox to help them in their streaming business. But just last week, uh, Amazon announced the, uh, uh, the investment of uh, a distribution center here in Winnipeg as well. So Amazon keeps investing in, in the Winnipeg value proposition. Very quickly, Life Sciences. We, uh, Eric mentioned it, we got the, the only level four facility in, in Canada. And we got companies that are manufacturing um, biopharmaceutical products for some of the leading uh, firms in the world, but also local successes like Emergent that um, are building new solutions um, for today's challenges. So I'm gonna close with this short video on, on Winnipeg to give you a little bit more context on what the city is. So I'll mute myself and hopefully you can hear, see this. Winnipeg. Who are we? What makes us tick? It's our shared history that has molded us into who we are today. We've been brave and stood tall when it was required of us. We are a community, resilient in the face of adversity. We've been told what we can't do. Time and time again, we show them that we can. Winnipeggers make things go and have a clear vision of where to take them. We contribute, we innovate. We're self-starters and we're self-made. We may be known for being easygoing, but we never stop. Though we only occupy a small corner of it, we're big on making the world better. We keep our community connected to the world. We're a vibrant city, excited about our next chapter. Now is the time for each and every one of us to come together to rebuild our city. Winnipeggers have risen to the unprecedented challenge we face, and we've done it with pride and resilience because we are a community. We are Winnipeg, Manitoba. We are back to work and back to business. Be a part of our story.
So that is our short video, and um, that is my contact information here in, in Winnipeg. Um, that's edX, and we'll be sharing this presentation with Edfin for its distribution, and we're happy to take any questions now, Edfin. Thank you very much, Eric, and Alberto was very interesting, and actually I learned a lot uh, on, on, on the province since I'm also new in Canada, so it was very also useful for me. Uh, to the participants, please don't hesitate to sh to ask your, your question. I have one for now, and, and personally, I also have some questions. So I will start with the one that is in the, the question and answer. So what support is available for small service organization wanting to start up a business in Manitoba? I don't know, Alberto. Yeah, some, yeah, some of the support that they, they would have is they got this um, hand-holding um, level of service for them to land in Winnipeg. Uh, one of the, and Eddie can share a little bit more, but some of the, the seminars and uh, services that they provide to small businesses are really good to help them understand exactly what are the steps to follow to incorporate in Manitoba and start operating in a very short time period. Canada has one of the most competitive uh, timelines to, for businesses to get going. Um, around the world. So uh, maybe Eric, you can expand on that, but very quickly um, on, on, our, on our end, um, we, we uh, would like to support businesses in connecting them to the right uh, parties to bring the talent that they need because as a business service oriented, uh, as, as, as a service oriented business, um, we understand that talent is key for them to provide the service that they, that they offer. And if they need to find talent in Canada, we can plug them in with our talent team to make sure they get the right people in their team. If they need to bring people from, uh, from abroad, from Europe, for example, we work with our federal partners and provincial partners to find the best immigration program to channel that, that talent into, into the business um, here in, in, in Manitoba. And obviously, as I mentioned, the costs of operating the business, once you open the door and flip the switch, um, the cost of operating that business are much more manageable in Winnipeg than a bigger uh, city, uh, uh, in any other city in, in North America. Eric? Yeah, so um, in terms of how to start our business in Manitoba, that's, that's actually the name of our seminar <laughs> that, that, that we offer. So it's literally called How to Start Our Business in Manitoba. Um, so we, we hold it usually in person, uh, but it's also always online. So uh, you can live stream the event. Um, uh, we usually offer it once every two or three months. Um, so if, if you go on our website and you go under events, um, you can definitely uh, go into our calendar and, and log in for the next edition. Um, we, it's one of the, the most popular uh, uh, seminars that we offer. We, other types of seminar we offer are, you know, how to do your taxes in, in Manitoba, which would be interesting for, for someone coming from outside of Manitoba. Um, how to do your taxes, how to, how to hire uh, people, um, how to handle the, the sales taxes uh, here. So we, we do have a, a whole series of seminars that are offered and they're open to anyone because they're live streamed um, uh, online. And we do often uh, get uh, people from around the world uh, logging into it, uh, people that are you know, maybe a diaspora of Manitobans uh, uh, logging into it, or it could be uh, people interested in immigrating here um, that, that want to start a business and uh, would actually follow up on our seminars. Um, something else that I think Manitoba has that um, uh, might be uh, less widely understood is we have diasporas, especially with uh, European countries. We, we have diasporas here in Winnipeg, in Winnipeg but also Manitoba. So uh, especially for um, uh, French speaking, people from France, people from Germany, uh, we actually have the largest Icelandic uh, population outside of Iceland in the world. Um, so actually, if, as an anecdote, when I went to Iceland last time, uh, uh, when I, and usually when you say you're from Manitoba, people, people don't know where that is. Um, they say, oh yeah, that's New Iceland. For them, it's, you know, <laughs> every, they, have, they all have family that are here apparently. But, um, uh, you know, we, we even have uh, schools uh, just outside of Winnipeg that teach Ukrainian as, uh, as a first language. Uh, because we have a pretty big Ukrainian population. So uh, historically speaking, in the 20th century, we have, we've had lar large waves of immigration from all over Europe. And those companies, or companies, those people have kept um, 
the language is alive. So um, if you're thinking of the degree of, let's say, foreignness of going to a foreign country, um, that could be quite significantly helped along when you have people speaking your language and uh, have ties to the mother country. So um, it's something that, you know, it makes a difference, especially when you're moving your family here, um, yeah. the yeah. integrated community. Thank you very much. Um, I think that the, the presentation was very clear because I don't have much question, but I actually ha do have questions. But again, to all the participants, you will receive the presentation by, by tomorrow. You will get, uh, of course, Eric and Alberto's contact. So feel free to just contact them uh, uh, if you have any, any project in, in Manitoba or Winnipeg. Um, of course, we, we talked uh, more about FDI. Do you have any idea in, in terms of trade uh, with who Manitoba, or with which country, which European uh, country Manitoba is, is actually dealing more with, whether it's, it's on the export side on the, or the import side? Sure. It's, it's, um, as you can imagine, it's, it's uh, the UK, France, and Germany. Um, they're, they're often at the uh, roughly similar levels of trade. Um, the thing about Manitoba, if you look at the, uh, if you look again at the map, um, Manitoba is essentially landlocked. Um, we, we have access to the Arctic Ocean, but that's, there's not much traffic going through it. So um, we, our trade is mostly with the United States. So um, about 80% of what we sell and buy uh, across borders is with the United States. Um, which also means that we are well positioned to enter the United States if, if that's what you're, you're looking for. Um, but in terms of, of direct trade with the European Union, um, the, big, uh, you know, the big three countries, so the UK, uh, France, and Germany, the, the types of, of uh, trade that we do, um, aerospace is, is a big one. Uh, like we said, uh, we have Standard Aero, which does uh, maintenance and repair. And we also have uh, the engine testing facilities here. Uh, so when uh, Rolls-Royce, for example, uh, which is in Britain, but is actually now, I think, a German because it's owned by Volkswagen, I think. <laughs> but they, they, um, they send their engines uh, from you know, British Airways down to Winnipeg to have, it, to have it fixed up and tested and then sent back. So uh, that, that counts as an import-export. Um, in terms of uh, commodities, is something that we sell a lot of. So uh, when we say we make wheat or we produce wheat, for example, uh, it's not just you know, wheat, it, it, it's called Durham A, which is a specific class, which is known as the best in the world. So it's not just that we, produ we produce a lot of commodity, it's, it's also the best in, in the world in terms of quality. So um, a lot of that is, is being sent over to European countries as well. And um, a, lot of, a lot of multinationals are, are here uh, that you, you would see um, I'm thinking uh, Vinci from France. I'm thinking um, BASF from Germany, uh, Thyssen Krupp, the, the elevators. Uh, it's basically everywhere here. So there's a lot of um, trade being done within companies that might not necessarily count in formal trade, um, but uh, we're very much integrated into the, the wider, um, uh, you, know, the, you know, the multinational scene as, as well. Yeah, great. All right, thank you. Just to be mindful of the time, I think we, we, we will um, end here, but, but just a note because I think it's indeed interesting. I mean, uh, for me, again, CETA offers really a, a safe and stable place to trade and invest between Europe and, and Canada. And at the same time, it also allows for European companies to choose Canada as the, as the main focus, but also expand to the US markets and even uh, even uh, also pass and and it's the same also for Canadian companies who are looking for example at the African market Europe can be a, a safe place to start with so yeah again CETA offers a lot of opportunities so to all the participants I invite you to to check again our, our latest uh, event on, on CETA I really would like to thank you Eric and Alberto for your presentation today I think it was very interesting and we'll I guess all learned a lot about uh, Manitoba so thank you very much uh, to the participants, again, you, you have the contacts, but you will have the presentation, so feel free to contact Alberto and, and, and Eric for any question when it comes to, to Manitoba. And of course, we are continuing also uh, next week uh, our, our series of, of, of webinar, but you will receive the, all the information. Again, yeah, Alberto and Eric, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Merci. Merci bien. And Muchas gracias. All, <laughs> and to all have a have a great day and see you next week for the next edition thank you very much everyone thank you Bye. ciao ciao
Bye. Thanks.